I'm Clarence Wickfall of AdvancedScienceCommunications.com. Do you know what MuckMed is? Meaningful Use of Complex Medical Data. We have a new series of interviews from the first ever MuckMed conference that was held at the Saban Research Institute in Los Angeles, California. And we'll be bringing you interviews from researchers from across the U.S. who presented at that first MuckMed conference. These interviews will give you a flavor of the big picture. MuckMed has the potential to change the way medicine is practiced by dramatically improving outcomes while it drastically decreases medical costs. You'll hear from researchers and clinicians who are working daily to help critically ill babies beat the terrible odds against their survival. They're developing productive models that can alert medical staff to threatening problems before they occur. We'll start our series with an interview with Randall Wetzel, the creator and founder of MuckMed. Dr. Wetzel, a pediatrician, is the head of anesthesiology at Children's Hospital Los Angeles and a director of the Virtual Pediatric Intensive Care Unit and he's also the founder of VPS LLC, which streams the world's largest database of pediatric critical care patients. So check back regularly. We've got some great interviews ready for you. We'll be posting them, and they're going to start soon. Uh, medical data is by its inherent nature complex, so perhaps it's a bit of a redundancy. Um, it is multidimensional. It is time series based. It comes from multiple disparate instruments. And of course, when you're dealing with medical data, data you're dealing with people's private information. Um, and ultimately, what you do with it affects people's lives. When we say meaningful use, we mean meaningful use of that data, not just collecting the data. Um, and so uh, we have been working in the virtual PICU for the last five years. We've been funded by uh, our, con our initial benefactors have continue continued to be generous. But we have also been funded by um, uh, the NIH and by Congress and uh, most recently by the National Library of Medicine. Um, and they have funded us to look at how we acquire this data, how we store it, how we disseminate it, how we keep it secure. And finally, after 12 years, what I'm most excited about, how we apply uh, machine learning techniques and advanced computational techniques to really analyze the data in a dispassionate, unbiased way to see what all of that information, uh, sorry, what all of that data can tell us about how critically, critical illness happens to children. Who are some of the uh, other players that you've gotten involved because you have uh, an amazing array? Well, we've had a long-term partnership with uh, Jet Propulsion Labs uh, in Pasadena. Uh, their computer science section has been involved with all aspects of this project f probably since about 1998. Um, I remember bringing some of the computer scientists who were used to sending, and still do, um, satellites uh, into space and onto Mars and further than that, um, and with the scientists who were responsible for capturing all of the information from all of those instruments. Although they are exciting um, to, the, to the general audience that we're going to Mars, we often forget that we're going to Mars as a scientific mission. Those satellites are loaded with instruments to make scientific measurements to tell us about what's happening. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of scientific instruments pointed at the skies to tell us what's happening, but they're often in different databases. It's often very complex data. It's often heterogeneous. It's often not shared. Does all of this sound familiar now? Uh, the similarities between that challenge and the medical challenge seem to us similar. And they made some uh, very significant progress on doing that. I probably shouldn't launch into a discourse about the whole nomenclature of artificial intelligence, but uh, I think I prefer machine learning, um, and I think I probably prefer information science assisted thought. Um, uh, this is intelligence, it's created by human beings. We forget the computers aren't creating the intelligence, it's created by human beings. It's no less artificial than. Uh, 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 adding machine, a computer, or anything else. So uh, I'd go with computer-assisted learning or machine learning, uh, and which I really view of, and this is what really artificial intelligence is, advanced algorithmic exploration of the real world 
to form a database from which machines can take the next step. Intensivists were probably overloaded with data 15 years ago. Um, uh, to f it is very difficult for humans to follow more than a handful of data streams or bits of information and deal with them simultaneously. Um, and we have lots and lots of display um, uh, in the ICU. I might have trouble following more than three to five. Um, seven is often a number quoted. And it doesn't really matter if it's three or seven because the reality is, is coming off every single bedside, there are 30 or 40 continuous physiologic streams, plus their lab data, plus their radiologic data, plus the history and physical examination information. One bed in a 40-bed ICU, um, and that's at one minute. I have, and I haven't been interrupted yet by all of those other people who are also in the ICU taking care of those patients. So there is a, uh, and it's almost a cliche to say, information overload in the ICU. We uh, have difficulty knowing how best to display that. We have difficulty getting uh, our attention towards all of it, and we may miss things that are important. Um, and we certainly have difficulty making sense of it, either acutely or in the long run. Now, humans are very good at recognizing patterns. Um, and you can recognize someone's face a long way away. Um, but uh, computers are very good at that as well. And having them present to us information um, and uh, knowledge about our patients helps support our intelligence. My background is that I am a pediatrician, a pediatric intensive care specialist, and an anesthesiologist. Um, and uh, probably starting around 1995, I became increasingly interested in what uh, information technology could offer the care of critically ill children. Um, I came here in 1997 um, as the director of pediatric critical care and um, had the idea uh, to, f to use information technology to assist uh, directly in the care of critically ill children to assess what happened, how critical illness happens to children, um, and to use it to improve communication. The idea that uh, I always viewed as the most exciting and central to this was being able to capture all the information that we gather about critical illness in children and learn from it. Now. Uh, at this time, all of that ICU data was flowing from the monitors and in a few places, like here at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, into data collection systems to generate an electronic health record. Now this was at a time before EHRs had been mentioned. Um, we were digitally capturing all of this data. And it seemed to me at the time a simple task to take all of this digital data also take the digital data at other ICUs that might be collecting it to um, manage it with computer science techniques and information science techniques and use it to inform how we cared for the next child. So that every time we were treating a child we were really doing it more than one at a time. We had, we used what we knew, really knew, because we captured it. It wasn't dependent on my memory or my seeing everything that happened, but we could capture it using advanced computer techniques, save it, store it, create the appropriate databases, uh, curate it, search it, and learn from it, and then take it right back to the bedside for the next child. And we had massive amounts of, of very granular, very fine detailed data, minute by minute, heartbeat by heartbeat, blood pressure by blood pressure, for, uh, in our ICU, 1,500 patients a year, but across the country, um, thousands of patients a year. Now in reality, then, we didn't even know the answer to that question. How many children were critically ill in the United States? What sort of illnesses did they have? How long were they in the ICUs? How sick were they? Could you compare one ICU's performance against another? Um, and this was, although it seems impossible to remember, at a time when hospitals weren't connected to the internet, people didn't keep digital data um, or digital logs of patients that were in the ICU. And as I've already mentioned, less than 1% of hospitals had anything approximating an EHR.
Well, MuckMed was tremendously successful because for the first time we got people from industry inter interested in these very challenges. From academia, we had some brilliant minds from IBM and from Yahoo and from uh, uh, across industries, Stanford, Harvard, Hopkins, um, UCLA, USC, here to face these challenges. They were all very excited. Just the energy in the room for two and a half days was tremendous, and we all shared and learned a lot about each other's domain. The takeaway for me is what I've been looking forward to for 12 years now um, is truly possible, and this weekend we started seeing it work.